Hey everyone, here we have the Zoom H1 Handy Recorder. Uh, you can think of this video as kind of like a video user guide. Uh, we're just going to go over exactly how to use the Zoom H1 and how to use all of the functions that it offers. So uh, let's get started with turning the device on. And before uh, we get into that, um, there is a unboxing video that you can watch just uh, there will be an annotation in the video and a link in the description so you can catch the unboxing video um, and my initial impressions of the device this is not a review video I will later be posting a review anyways back to turning it on if we go to the right side of the device we have a power hold switch here so uh, we just need to uh, kind of just slide this down and you need to hold it down until the screen says hi, it'll say card access, so it's reading the card, and then we get the main screen. On the main screen, uh, this time here is the remaining time left on the card, um, so this is the amount of time we can record on the card at our current settings. Now, as you see, it is a backlight display, and the backlight just went off. It goes off after a certain amount of inactivity. So that's our remaining time on the card. On the left side, these are our levels for the left and uh, right speakers. Up here, we have our uh, audio recording information. So it tells us that we are going to be recording in WAV format at uh, 44 kilohertz and 16 bit. And then we have a battery indicator up there telling me I have a full battery. So we'll go over some of the settings and how to change some of the settings in a second. But right now, let's just uh, look at recording a video. So to record a video, it's pretty simple. And you just need to hit this big red button on the front. When we hit the red button, there will be an REC block down here, standing for record. And then also this uh, LED indicator will be on solid when it is recording and when the audio levels are peaking above uh, what they should be the light will start to flash so right now I have my input levels set very high uh, so it's real easily peaking so that light is flashing a lot so to stop the recording we're going to just press that record button one more time and the recording stops now if we wanted to play back that recording We'll go over to the right side of the device, and we have some play controls here. Uh, rewind, play pause, and fast forward. Just hit the play pause button, and it just begins to play the most recent file. We can use these to pause again, begin to play again, fast forward, or even rewind, or if we press the rewind button twice, it will go to the previous file that we've recorded. If we press it one more time, it will go to the previous file, and we can keep doing that, and it will go through all of the files that are stored on the SD card. You can use the trash can button to delete any current file that it is playing. So the file that is currently playing, when you press the trash can button, it will delete that file. Now let's take a look at the SD card. Uh, on the left side of the device we have our micro SD slot. So we just pop open the cover. If I can get that open. And then press the SD card in and it will pop out. So there's our micro SD card. Now um, to get the files off of the SD card you can use the USB jack only if you have um, a cord that will fit in there or you could buy the optional accessory package for the Zoom H1 and that will include a cord and if you hook it up to your computer it will view the SD card contents or you can use the included micro SD card adapter so you just plop the micro SD in the bottom of the adapter and then the adapter you can plug into your computer or SD card reader so let's put the micro SD back into the recorder and continue looking at some of the functions of the recorder. So we just need to put it in the hole and kind of snap it in there and you hear a click and that's when you know it's in and then we click this cover back on. Now the cover, I tend 
tended to have a little bit of problems, or some problems, I should say, trying to get the cover on completely. It's not the easiest thing to put on. It's still, I didn't do it quite right. It's still jiggling around a little bit. So I'll have to uh, play with it a little bit later. But let's continue looking at some of the functions here. Going back to playing, we can change the volume of the internal speaker on the left side with this volume rocker. So the volume is on a level of 0 to 100. We can also plug in headphones in this line out jack here, and then the volume rocker will adjust the volume for the headphones. So let's pause what is playing now. To get back to the recording screen after playing something, just hit the record button and it will bring you back to the main screen. But it notice that it is not recording anything. Um, after we press that button, we need to press it again in order for it to start recording. Now we have a hold button where the power uh, button is. Uh, this power thing is kind of like a slider actually. So to power it on and off, you just press and hold it down. But then when you release, it will go back to its neutral position. Well, for hold, you just push it up, and it will stay in that position. When you set the device to hold, you cannot change any of the settings. Notice I'm pressing the buttons, but the, the device just says hold. Even recording will not work when the device is in hold. So hold could be a good feature if you're on the go, and you have the device settings already set to what you want them to be, and you want to make sure that they don't get messed up. Or, if you're already in a recording, you can put it on hold to make sure that you don't accidentally stop the recording. And we turn off hold just by sliding the slider back into its neutral position. Now, let's look at how to customize the live recording. So, how saying, telling the recorder how it's going to uh, record. First of all, we have some input levels on the right side. We can use these rockers to adjust the input level. Again, it is on a scale of 0 to 100, and uh, so basically the lower the level, the lower the volume it is going to record at, and the higher the level, the higher the volume it is going to record at. And the trick is, you want it to be loud enough so that the viewer will be able, or, or the listener I should say, will be able to hear the audio comfortably, but you don't want it so high that your levels are always peaking, because that means um, the audio could come out distorted in the final product. So you may want to do some audio tests and make sure that your levels look okay. It's okay if they peak every once in a while because you do want them to be on the high side so that you get a good volume recording. Now if you don't want to mess with the input levels, on the back we have some more settings and this middle toggle here is called auto level. So if we flip that on You notice if we try to change the input level, it just says level auto. So it will automatically adjust the input level to a level that is good for what it is hearing right now, and so that there will be no distortion. So as you can see, uh, it is not peaking quite as often as it was before I set it to auto. But it's still peaking a little bit, which is okay. You can have some peaking. Um, to make sure that you get a loud enough recording. So we'll flip auto level back off. Now uh, some advantages and disadvantages of auto level. Uh, auto level would not be a good thing to have on if you were recording music because in music you may have some dynamic changes with the music. Um, you may have loud sections and then soft sections and so you want to make sure that in your recording you get those louds and softs, so you may not want to have the auto level on for that because uh, when the music gets softer, the auto level may boost the level, um, therefore kind of canceling out that dynamic change. Uh, instead, you may just want to use the input level to set an input level um, so that it is not peaking, um, and the best time to, to choose the input level is when whatever your recording is at its pretty much highest volume. So get what you want to record at its highest volume and set it to a level 
that can sustain that volume. That is uh, typically a good input level to have it set to. Now, next to the input levels, we have another jack. This is a microphone line-in jack. So you can plug in another microphone to use, and it will record um, with these two microphones, as well as the microphone line-in, um, all simultaneously. So three channels recording simultaneously. And that microphone will also use the same input levels that you have set. Going again to the back of the device, let's look at some of the other options we have here. First of all, we have low cut, so let's turn low cut on. When we turn low cut on, we see another icon appears on the screen. And that icon is telling us that low cut is on. What low cut does is it will try to eliminate as much as possible any wind or other background noise um, that may disrupt the recording. Uh, mostly wind, so if you're in an outside environment, um, and it's a little windy, you may want to turn low cut on. Uh, low cut is not really an ideal um, substitute for like a windscreen, um, which will really take away um, that excess noise that you may not want in your recording. But it is a nice built-in feature um, to cut down on a wind type background noise. We already talked about the next one, auto level, going on we have recording format. Our two recording formats we can choose from are WAV and MP3. WAV is the highest quality um, you can get. MP3 you would only want to choose if you are trying to maximize the amount of recording you can get on your SD card. But if you're trying to optimize the quality of the recording you would want to choose WAV. So uh, we'll fool around with some of those settings. You can also change the kilohertz and bitrate settings. You can change those, make sure you're on the recording screen, and use the forward and back buttons. So kind of like your playback controls, use those. So the forward button will increase the quality, and then the back button will decrease the quality. So you can choose between different qualities. The highest quality would be 96 kilohertz, 24-bit. Uh, and if we scroll through them, going down, we can choose 96 kilohertz, 16-bit, and you can see my remaining time went up because it is less quality, so I'm able to fit more onto the SD card. We'll go down another one. This is 48 kilohertz, 24-bit. Again, my recording time went up. This is 48 kilohertz, 16-bit. 44 kilohertz 24 bit, 44 kilohertz 16 bit again, and then we're back to our highest 96 kilohertz 24 bit. So as you can see, with lower quality, we are able to fit more onto the SD card. Now going to the back, we'll try setting this toggle to MP3 and see what happens. And you may notice there was a huge jump in the amount of time um, we can fit onto the SD card. We now, you know, before we only had 20 minutes, now we have 13 hours. So uh, MP3 is going to be a lower quality, but you're able to fit a lot more recording onto your SD card. So uh, again, let's toggle through some of the quality settings. Uh, in MP3, it's going to measure the quality in kilobits per second. So right now we're set to 128, but we can also go to 160. 192, 224, 256, 320, I believe, yeah, that was the highest, so 320. Our lowest would be 48, where we're able to squeeze, well, at least for the amount of info I already have on here, I'm able to squeeze 35 hours, which is pretty impressive because I almost have this thing filled up. I almost have the SD card filled up. So uh, 35 hours is pretty impressive, but again, it's going to be low quality recording. The highest quality MP3 you can get is 320 kilobits per second, which still gives me five hours for almost having a filled up um, SD card. But I'm going to flip that back to WAV because WAV will give me the uh, maximum uh, quality recording. Now, uh, if you ever want to erase your SD card directly on the H1 or format your SD card to work with the Zoom H1, uh, you can format your SD card directly on the H1. You do not need to insert it into a computer. 
Um, in fact, it may even be easier to do it on the H1 uh, because the H1 will format it to the file system that it needs to be uh, in order to be able to work with the H1. So to format your SD card directly on the Zoom H1, uh, first make sure that your H1 is turned off. Then you are going to press and hold the trash can button and then power the device on while holding the trash can. You'll notice it turns on it, which you can release everything. And then you'll get a screen that says format, press record. So just do exactly what it says, press the record button. And then after a second or two, um, it will say done. And then you will be presented with the main record screen. As you can see, my record time went up drastically. It also decreased my um, settings. So let's put it back to 96 kilohertz, 16 bit. You can see before I only had 20 minutes and now I have an hour and 25 minutes after I formatted. So it erased all the files that were on there and I now kind of have a fresh start. Now, the Zoom will uh, tag each file with a date and time um, that shows up on the screen when you scroll through the different files. If um, you need to set this date and time um, because you didn't set it out of the box or you have a time zone change um, or a daylight savings change, you can uh, reset the date and time. Make sure your zoom is off, press and hold the record button, and then power it on. You'll see hi, and then uh, after it is on, these are the settings, um, the date and time settings. So I uh, use the forward button to scroll through month. Oh, no, that increases the value. So the forward button and back button will increase, decrease the value. That's right. So we're in July. And then the play button will go to the next value. So day, year. And then we have the hour. This is in 24 hour time format. And then minutes and seconds. And then when you are done, it will go to the main screen. So that is how to change uh, the time and date so that your files are tagged correctly. So that is the tutorial of how to use the Zoom H1 recorder. Um, we went over how to change all of the uh, settings on here to optimize your audio to get a real good sounding recording. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment uh, on the video and I will get back to you. Um, I will have a review video of the Zoom H1 coming out soon uh, after I have a little bit of time to use it and form my opinions for it. Also check out my unboxing of it uh, where I go over my initial impressions uh, and how easy it is to use right out of the box. I tried using it without reading any documentation, so see how that went um, in my unboxing video. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up uh, and also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Um, and share the video with your friends who may be interested in getting a Zoom H1 or don't maybe don't know how to optimize it for their purposes. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.